Hello, everyone. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to this session, which will explain who the Institution of Mechanical Engineers is, what we do, and how gaining professional registration can help you move up the career ladder as you progress and develop as an engineer. I'm Sandra Mulligan, a Senior Business Development Manager with the Institution. My team and I spend all our time speaking to engineers and their employers in industry and academia, coaching and guiding applicants through the process of gaining professional registration. We also spend a lot of time engaging with students and apprentices. This is because one of our strategic goals is to develop, register and support all engineers and technicians to be at their best to achieve a safer and more sustainable world. IMECI, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, is a professional engineering institution for students, apprentices, technicians and engineers. The institution was founded over 175 years ago when the thought leaders and innovators of the day needed a way to exchange ideas and information. They didn't have the mobile technology at their fingertips that we enjoy nowadays. Over the years, our membership has grown. We now have about 115,000 members across 140 countries. We perform a number of roles. We are licensed by the Engineering Council to accredit university degree courses, apprenticeships and industry training programmes. If a product has been accredited by the institution, you can rest assured that it's a high quality product or service. We can award three grades of professional registration, EngTech, Engineering Technician Registration, IEng, Incorporated Engineer, and CEng, Chartered Engineer Status. In 2021, we elected 2,829 new registrants. We also organise and deliver training courses, numerous networking events, mentoring, conferences, seminars, all great opportunities to meet like-minded engineers. You'll find lots more detailed information on our website, www.imeki.org. So, what is professional registration and how is it achieved? There are many definitions. I like to explain it as the definitive measure of a successful career in engineering and global recognition of your knowledge and experience. It allows you to demonstrate that you are competent and that your competence has been assessed and verified by a highly reputable institution. It also demonstrates your work ethic and that you are committed to professional development. This in turn can allow you to have greater influence within your place of work and industry and it also improves your career prospects and employability. Registration can also be a means to satisfy the requirements of quality management systems, ISO 9001 for example, and it also allows recognition as an authorised countersignatory. I'll explain the pathways you can follow to gain registration. It's useful to think of registration as having three distinct steps. Step one, you need to meet the academic requirements attached to the grade of registration that you wish to apply for. Step two, you need to demonstrate that you meet the competence requirements attached to that grade of registration. This is done through relevant engineering work experience. You'll need at least three to four years of experience. Step three, as it's a peer review process, you need to provide evidence of meeting the competence requirements by submitting an application form and attending a professional review interview. If you answer the questions that are put to you at the interview confidently and competently, you'll be elected as a chartered engineer or incorporated engineer and member. As an undergraduate, you can take advantage of free affiliate or student membership. If you're not already an affiliate member, I'd encourage you to sign up for it. After you graduate, you can become an associate member, which allows you to use the post-nominal letters AMI MECI after your name. 
This allows you to demonstrate to colleagues, peers and prospective employers that you have an academic qualification and you're working towards professional registration and using your initiative. This is a summary of the requirements for the three grades of registration. With EngTech or Engineering Technician, an applicant who has completed an apprenticeship, which includes both academic qualifications and work experience, will meet the requirements. For IEng, Incorporated Engineer, it's an accredited BEng and three years of work experience or alternatively, a HNC or HND or foundation degree with further learning and three years of work. We refer to the period before an engineer is awarded registration as their initial professional development or IPD. For CNG, chartered engineer, you'll need an accredited master's degree in engineering or equivalent and at least four years of relevant work experience. If you're unsure whether your qualification is accredited or not, please use the qualifications checker on our website. It's important to highlight that each applicant is assessed on an individual basis. While some applicants are ready to apply for incorporated engineer after three years, for example, other applicants take longer to develop the right level of competence. This is because we're all different, we all have varying career aspirations, opportunities available to us, strengths and weaknesses, etc. The competence of all professional engineers in the UK is assessed against a framework which is called UK SPEC, UK Standards for Professional Engineering Competence and Commitment. Since January 2022, applicants are rated against UK Spec 4. This updated framework provides more clarity for all applicants. Each of the three registration titles requires demonstration of five broad areas of competence and commitment. A is your knowledge and understanding. B is design, development and solving engineering problems. C is responsibility, management and leadership. D is communication and interpersonal skills. And E is professional commitment. This is a brief summary of what the competence requirements are. You'll need to explore them in more detail on the IMEC-E or Engineering Council websites. The only part of UK Spec 4 that's brand new is the requirement that applicants must demonstrate an awareness of diversity and inclusion issues. Do you understand what neurodiversity is? Do you call out inappropriate behaviour? What does diversity, equality and inclusion mean to you and why are they important? There are lots of fantastic resources that you can use to educate yourself in relation to diversity and inclusion matters, including materials on the iMeki website and YouTube channels. At your professional review interview, you may, for example, be asked what you find is the most challenging aspect of working in a diverse environment. So please do make sure that you're adequately prepared. I've referred to an engineer's initial professional development or IPD. How can a developing engineer record their IPD? IMECE has developed tools that developing engineers may use to record their achievements and progress. These are the Developing Engineers Programme, the Monitored Professional Development Scheme, MPDS, and the Supported Registration Scheme, SRS. You're not required to use the IMEC-E tools to record your initial professional development. You may prefer to keep your own logbook or spreadsheet. The Developing Engineers Programme has a suite of tools that associate members may use to keep track of how they're developing. It's very important that you keep a record of your achievements and take time to reflect on how you are progressing and developing. The following five tools and resources can be used for this purpose and help you keep focused on achieving your career goals. 
planning and recording tools, professional registration guidance, career support, get more from your membership and apply for professional registration. MPDS is Monitored Professional Development Scheme, a quality assured route to gaining professional registration. The employer submits an application to the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and we conduct an accreditation visit. Graduates are assigned a mentor and produce quarterly reports and annual assessments which are reviewed and assessed against the UK spec requirements. The supported registration scheme mentioned earlier is similar to MPDS, but the employer does not have a formal training scheme in place or host an accreditation visit. Remember, each applicant is assessed on an individual basis when they submit an application for professional registration. If you haven't been on MPDS, it's not a disadvantage. When you are ready to apply for registration, you need to compose an application form which you submit to our membership department. This is checked independently by two chartered engineers and then you will be invited to attend a professional review interview. During the course of your interview, the assessors will award you scores based on the information in your application form and how you respond to the questions that they put to you during the interview. They will give you scores from one to four across each of the five competencies. Level one is aware, level two is familiar, level three is skilled, and level four is expert. The minimum scores that are required in order for you to be successful are three level threes and two level twos from both of the assessors. The professional review interview is a peer review of your competence. It's an online meeting and lasts for about 45 to 60 minutes and you'll be doing about 80% of the talking. The interviewers will make a recommendation, which will then be endorsed by our professional review committee. Those successful are elected to membership of the institution and registered with the Engineering Council. The success rate is about 92%, but if you're not successful, you can reapply. Don't forget that there's lots of help and support available to you, so please don't be shy. Reach out if you need help. There are great case histories on our website which are worth exploring. They can develop your awareness of the fantastic opportunities out there in the world of work. This slide shows pictures of three case studies as seen on our website. Next to the images are their names, places of work and postnominal letters indicating their grades of registration. This is a top tip from one of our successful applicants, Sam Rawcliffe. As you embark on your career, keeping bullet points of what you've achieved can be a great resource when looking to show that you fulfil the UK spec competencies of a chartered engineer. Keep a record of your achievements. It makes life much easier when you are ready to submit your application. There are dedicated avenues of help available to you in the registration process, including support to prepare for your interview. So make sure to tap into these by getting in contact early in the process.